ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يا عباد الله اوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله My dear respected brothers we start first and foremost by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the king the master the sustainer the creator the one who created everything the one who designed everything the one who sustains everything the one that everything relies on and he relies on nothing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is self sufficient Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who everything is within his knowledge everything Nothing happens without his order. Nothing happens without his, without his decision. And we send peace and blessings upon his beloved Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, our prophet and our teacher. And my brothers, I remind myself and I remind you all to have fear of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And I know every single week you keep hearing about having fear of Allah. Fear of Allah that is most deserving. The fear that will stop us from committing the haram and from committing that which displeases Allah. The fear that you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching every single move I make. That fear. The fear when you're on the road and there's a safety camera, you know that if I speed or if I run that red light, it's going to snap me. It's going to take a shot. So no matter what happens on that particular traffic light, you're never going to speed there, are you? Because you know, you have conviction in your heart that that box, if I cross it, it's going to snap, it's going to take a shot, and there's a consequence that I've got to pay for it. This is the fear of Allah that should be in the heart of a believer, that Allah is watching 24 hours of the day. Have you ever been to their speed cameras? I'll have it's three o'clock in the morning and there's no one on the road. No one. There's absolutely no one on the road. Would you run the red? But there's no one on the road. Logically, let's speak logic. There's no one on the road. You're not going to harm anyone. Would you run the red? No. Would you speed? No. But the traffic light that's after it, I'm going to run not only the red, I'm going to run whatever color comes. But that one, because you know in your heart, and you know without yeah, any full certainty that there's something watching. My brother Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching every single move you make. This is the fear of Allah. That we should be trying to get into our hearts and to get into our lives. My dear respected brothers, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our beloved teacher, before I start, maybe if I can get the brothers to move forward because mashallah there's a big crowd and there's a lot of air pockets Sunnah is to fill up the gaps. So inshallah, let's all move forward so I don't have to ask you again. Come, cramp up, Malish. We're all brothers and there's B.O. so we all understand. I'm sure we can deal with it for half an hour. Please, move forward. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. My dear respected brothers, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, a beloved prophet. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was free from sin. He was free from sin. And Rasulullah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already told him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already promised him and has already guaranteed him the highest level in Jannah. Al Maqam al Mahmud belongs to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already forgiven his past, his present, and his future. But yet, this Prophet, in the authentic hadith, he says, by Allah, I make istighfar, meaning I make repentance. I make tawbah towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 70 times a day. 70 times in the day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who was free from sin, who had nothing to repent about anyway, he says, in the day I would turn back towards Allah and I would make tawbah 70 times a day. And in another narration, in an authentic hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's calling out to the people, meaning you and I. 
He says, oh, you who believe, turn back to your Lord. Turn back to your Lord in pardon and ask him for forgiveness. For by Allah, I turn towards Allah 100 times a day. 100 times a day. My brothers, the quality of repentance, the topic of repentance is a very, very interesting one. Allah loves you. And Allah wants to hear your voice according to Rasulullah 100 times a day, minimum. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's advising the ummah to make tawbah towards Allah. And this is a quality that is dead. Or if it's not dead, it's very little. And really, if you look at your life, ask yourself, just how much do I repent towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the authentic hadith, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stretches his hand during the day so that the sinners of the night can repent. And then Allah the Almighty stretches his hand during the night so that the sinners of the day can repent. And Allah will continue to stretch his hand during the day and the night till the sun rises from the west, meaning the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers, the king, the master, the creator. You know, it's, it's an amazing thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need anyone. Allah doesn't need anyone. Don't ever think, brother, in your life that your charity or your salah or your little tasbih or your little... This does not increase Allah's greatness. This does not make Allah better in any way, shape or form. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Hadith Al-Qudsi, He says, Ya ibadi, Allah is calling out. He says, Oh my slaves, not the Muslims, anyone and everyone. Oh my slaves, Ya ibadi. If the first of you till the last of you, meaning from the first human being till the last human being, if all of you, human and jinn, if you were all together collectively and worship me and worship me and worship me and worship me until you all come like the best heart amongst you, this does not increase my greatness. It does not increase Allah's greatness. In fact, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yani just, just to paint the picture that Allah doesn't need our worship. Allah doesn't need our worship. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with his sahaba. He says to them, you know, I see what you don't see. And I hear what you don't hear. He says to them, verily the heavens have squeaked. The heavens, the sky, the heavens have squeaked. You know, when you put a lot of weight on something, it makes that squeaking sound. There's a lot of weight, there's a lot of pressure on it. He says, the heavens have squeaked. He says, for by Allah, there isn't room for four fingers, except there is an angel in prostration towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does Allah need me? Does Allah need the $10 I'm going to put in the box when I walk out? Yet this Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the authentic hadith, that Allah is happier. Allah is so happy when you, my brother, when you, my sister, when you make tawbah towards Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the authentic hadith, imagine, look at the example he gives sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, imagine there's someone in the desert and he's riding on his camel and he has all of his provisions on the camel. And then the man takes some rest. And then all of a sudden he loses his camel. What hardship would this man be going through? Everything, my food, my water, my transportation is on the camel. And I lose the camel. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the authentic hadith, then imagine this man was to take some rest. 
then all of a sudden he wants to see his camel again. How happy would you become? How happy would you be? He says, Allah is happier than this man. When you make tawbah to him. Allahu Akbar. Ya Allah, you don't need me. Ya Allah, I'm nothing. Yet you are this happy when I make tawbah? Yes, my brother. Yes, my sister. Allah wants to hear your voice. Humble yourself before Allah. Humble. Because it shows that you're a slave and he's your master. Because it, it distinguishes any pride that's in the heart. Anything. How much does Allah love us? How much does Allah love us? He says, Oh my slave, what you know, what a Rabb, what a Lord we worship. You know, I was, um, there was an Egyptian Sheikh. He says, you know, I was asking some kids, you know, what's the biggest ni'mah in your life? He was asking some kids, what's the biggest bounty in your life? So he says, you know, naturally being a Sheikh, the kids were going to give me some smart answer or they were going to give me an answer that they were maybe expecting me to hear. He says, you know, so I went around and I asked, and one guy said, oh, the biggest ni'mah is Iman. This guy said Islam. The biggest ni'mah is the Quran. He said, until I got to this one kid, and I said to him, you know, what's the biggest na'ma? And he said, the biggest na'ma in Rabbina, huwa Rabbina. He says, the biggest na'ma that Allah is our Allah. He says that Allah is our Allah. Allah says, oh my slave, if you come to me with an earth load of sin, but you don't associate partners with me, I will come to you with an earth load of forgiveness. Allahu Akbar. Ya Abdi, if you came to me with an earth load of sin, but you didn't associate partners with me, I will come to you with an earth load of forgiveness. Allahu Akbar. He says, In Rabbina, who are Rabbina? That Allah is our Lord. This is the biggest ni'mah. This Allah who says, do what you want. If you repent, I will forgive. My brother, who in the world has so much love? Ya Allah, you don't need me. Ya Allah, I'm less than zero. You are the king of all kings. You are the master. You are the one who the billions and billions and billions and billions of angels are in prostration day and night. They never disobey you. Never, never, ever do they ever disobey you. Yet you're happy when this sinner says, Ya Allah, forgive me. It is said in another hadith, I think it's a weak narration. It says that there's a celebration in the heavens. Because you, my brother, made tawbah towards Allah. You know that little astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Oh Allah, forgive me. What love? You know who could, is there any doubt in this room that, no, that there could, there's no stronger bond between a mother and her child. Is there anyone in here that could possibly argue the point? Is there a stronger bond? In fact, even Allah uses the example of the mother and the breastfeeding child. He says, there's, there's no closer bond. This mother who for years, and even your mother, if you push the right buttons, she'll disown you. Your father who took honor and pride in knowing that I have a son or in knowing that I have a daughter, he took honor and pride and he worked day and night to provide us with with a good, comfortable life, even him, if you push the right buttons, he'll disown you. Your boss who you've been working for for 10 years, 20 years, even he has a procedure at work that if you break these rules, you're fired, you're gone, you're finished. Your best friend, your buddy, your pal, my brother, my coe, my whatever he is, years on the streets, Years together, we spend time in the cell together. He's my silly. Whatever he is, 
If you push the right buttons with him, even he's going to disown you. Is this not a Rabb who is worthy of worship? Does this Allah not, is, is he not worthy of being praised day and night? Don't put any money in the collection box. You don't have to speak to any sheikh. Nothing whatsoever. Don't sign any paperwork. You don't even need to be in wudu. You don't even need to be in a particular place or at a particular time. Nothing whatsoever. Anytime something enters the heart, you say, Ya Rabb. Allah says, Ya Abdi Naam. Naam, what do you want? And Allah isn't like the human being. You know, your mate who loves you. But I need a hundred bucks. Like, take my eye bro. You know the livers? Right? So he gives you the hundred and then other and then the two hundred and then the three hundred and then bro. Like you're my brother and all, but far out, like give and take, bro. Yeah? Allah, the more you ask, the happier. Allah, the bigger the ask, the bigger the wish, the happier he is. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, every single human being is a sinner. Everyone, sheikh, mufti, whatever he is, he's a sinner. He says, and the best of sinners are those who make tawbah towards Allah. In fact, Allah says, if this ummah was to stop sinning, Allah would replace it with an ummah that sins and then makes tawbah. Is this Rabb not worthy of worship? My dear respected brothers, please forgive me. But they're lining outside. Please move forward. Sit on each other. Sit on his back. It's all for Allah, inshallah. Please, brothers, come in. How much love? How much love does Allah have towards us? This is Allah, my brothers. This is Allah. And Allah wants to hear your voice. Humble yourself before Him. Do it in the dark. Do it on your own. Do it in public. In wudu, out wudu, doesn't matter. Turn to Allah. Allah wants to hear your voice. Allah already knows what you do in secret, in the dark is, and Allah already knows it anyway. But Allah wants to hear your voice. Allah wants to see you humble yourself before Him. And that's why my brother, when you raise your hands and you say, Ya Rabb, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, Allah, if you don't forgive me, who's going to forgive me? Allah, if you don't have mercy upon me, who's going to have mercy upon me? Who? Allah, I knock on your door. If you don't open the door, then who's going to open the door? Who? Brother and sister, if you had the money of the world, who can forgive your sins other than Allah? Who? No one except Him. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونصلي على الحبيب محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. You know there's always a brother in the crowd. There is always a brother in the crowd that says, "Brother, not me, man. You don't know my past. You don't know the places I've been, and you don't know the things I've done." There's always, always that brother. My brothers, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us in the authentic hadith in Bukhari. He tells us of a man who killed 99 people. He killed 99 people. Authentic hadith in Bukhari. Open up Riyadh Salihin, chapter 2, repentance. Look at it there. So after 99 people, Something entered his heart and he wanted to make tawbah. 
So he asks the people, you know, he says to him, where can I go? I want to make Toba. So the people said to him, look, there's this guy who's a Abid. He worships Allah day and night. If there's anyone you're going to ask, go and ask him. So the man goes to him and says to him, brother, I've killed 99 people and I want to make Toba. Can Allah forgive me? So this Abid, and just a side point, my brothers, this is the danger when you seek knowledge from someone who looks religious. But bro, he's in the masjid every day, bro. This guy's pumped. I asked him and he said, it's all right. We all do this. Brother, his beard's like that. Wallah, his beard's like that. And he's always in the masjid. I asked him and he said, it's all right. So he asks the Abid, this guy's worshipped Allah day and night. This guy's never seen anything. This guy's in worship day and night. So when he hears 99 people, the guy freaks out. He can't comprehend killing one man, let alone 99. He says to him, Allah can never forgive you. So the man goes, well, since Allah's not going to forgive me, we'll like one of our anyway, bro. So he kills him as well. But he polished him off because he didn't like his fatwa. It shows you the ruthlessness of this man. He killed a habit, not someone who, who offended him or someone who, you know, eyeballed him or someone who opposed him out on the streets. He disrespected, no, no, not this guy's a worshiper, bro. But because he didn't like his fatwa, he killed him and made him a hundred. Authentic hadith, Bukhari, huh? he says, but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, but there was something in his heart. He really wanted to turn back towards Allah. So he asked. And then the people said to him, look, yani don't hang around here, otherwise you kill us all. There's an area, there's a scholar there. There's a scholar there. Go and speak to him. It's a long story, I'll cut it short. He goes to the scholar, he says to him, I've killed a hundred, can Allah forgive me? Now look at the difference between when you ask, you know, the guy in the mosque, you know, the guy with the big beard, when you ask him and you ask Alim. He says to the man, and who can stand between you and Tawbah? Who? Now we're talking. The man's thinking, now we're talking. I like this thing. He says to him, for you to make Tawbah, you got to leave this environment. It's a very bad environment. And the people, they're not helping you in doing good. There is a town. There is an area. Go there. There are good people. These people will help you worship Allah and they will help you pull up and change. So the man was sincere. He packs his stuff and heads off to the town. On the way, death meets him. He dies. So the angels of forgiveness come down and the angels of punishment come down. And there's an argument. The angels of mercy said, but he made Toba. The angels of punishment said, no, no, no. He killed a hundred people and he didn't complete his Toba. He was on the way. So Allah sends down a third to be a judge between them. The angel says, measure the distance. If he is closer to the town of sin, then let the angels of punishment take him. But if he is closer to the town of forgiveness, then let the angels of mercy take him. So they measured the earth and unfortunately for him, he was closer to the town of sin. Authentic hadith in Bukhari. Allah ordered the earth to change its dimensions and made him one hand span closer to the town of piety. One hundred people. But he was sincere. Allah gave him this. My time is very short. I have to speed this next stuff up. Uh, I gave the same khutbah, someone came up to me after, he said to me, bro, my 14 year old son has a big smile on his face. I said to him, why? He said, because now he thinks he can go do whatever he wants and Allah's going to forgive him. So I said tomorrow, like, and I'll, I'll, I'll make this a note towards the end of my khutbah. Brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and forgiveness is not a free ticket for you to go out there and sin. Don't misunderstand the khutbah. Allah's mercy is for the one who wants it.
Allah's mercy is for the one who does wrong and then he acknowledges his wrong and then he wants to turn to Allah, then Allah forgives him, yes. But this does not mean in any way, shape or form that this is a golden ticket for you and I to get out onto the streets and run amok and then say, you know what? I'll repent when I'm older. You're planning and plotting against Allah. You think Allah doesn't know what's in your heart, brother? Sister, do you think Allah doesn't know what's in your heart? What makes you think? What makes you think that you will make that tawbah, that you will repent before death comes to you? It's like Pharaoh. Allah mentions him in the Quran. Pharaoh, the biggest tyrant. Then when death came to him and he was drowning, he said, Oh, I believe in the Lord of the Israelites. Allah says, now, you, now you've acknowledged. Now you've come. And Allah took him. Allah did not accept this tawbah. So don't be of the foolish, my brother and sister. Make tawbah towards Allah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let Allah hear your voice. Allah wants to hear your voice. No matter how many times of the day, no matter what you ask for, Allah is happy to hear it. So inshallah, every single one of us should make this a quality every single day that we make tawbah towards Allah. And when you get out here and you go back home to your families, you have an amana and a responsibility to spread what you hear. You heard a nice khutbah, mashallah? Go there, tell your wife, tell your kids, tell your husband, teach them. Make it a regular quality. Istighfar can change your life. Istighfar can change. Allah, Nuh in the Quran, on the tongue of Nuh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and when you make istighfar, Allah will give you rizq. Allah will give you rizq. You can't have kids. People are paying thousands of dollars now. Make istighfar. Allah will give you. My brothers, uh, there are two announcements that I need to make. One of them being that the Sydney IC, the Islamic College here in the UMA, mashallah, um, inshallah, it's going to be starting. It's, uh, it is now open for enrollments. And uh, there is uh, 24 modules that they're going to be covering. And of course, this is fuck. My brothers and sisters, a point that needs to be made. Learning your deen is fard. It's fard. It's an obligation upon you. You have to learn your deen. You have to learn your deen. You know, when we were in Egypt, there was a brother who was married. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? He was married for 40 years. For ha four zero. He was married for 40 years and he's been praying. But he was under the understanding that you only make ghusl when you commit zina, not when you sleep with your wife. For 40 years. Because he didn't know. You can't stand before Allah and say, oh, I didn't know. No, you have to know. You know, just the other day I was told, you know, I, I, honestly, I wonder how many sisters know this. You know, if a sister's got her periods, right? This is according to the, uh, this, is, this is according to Imam Shafi'i, right? He says, if a woman has her periods and she wakes up just before Fajr and she finds that she's clean, what does she have to pray? Who can tell me? She has to pray Maghrib and Isha. She has to pray Maghrib and Isha. No, but I cleaned up so she prays Fajr and she misses Maghrib and, and And honestly, I didn't know this. According to Imam Shafi'i, if you do not make the intention of wudu during the washing of the face, your wudu is not accepted, therefore your prayer is not accepted. Brothers, we have to know our deen. We went to Hajj with boys. By Allah, they did not know how to make wudu. And that, brothers with beads, they didn't know how to make wudu. I remember not, 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 uh, not this year, last year, we went to visit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you know everyone's crying and it's a very emotional thing and one of the brothers says Allahu Akbar but I can't believe Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is there in my shul. I said to him brother you know like how mad is this you know Rasulullah and Abu Bakr and Omar he said me who's Abu Bakr? Brother wallah it's not funny by Allah it's not funny he didn't know who Abu Bakr is Brother, if you don't know the number one man to walk the earth after Rasulullah and the prophets, he 
didn't know him. He didn't know who Abu Bakr is. So my brothers, please, Sydney IC, the enrollments are out. They're over here. Please, by Allah, learn your deen, learn your deen, learn your deen. Nasallallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala an yarhamna wa yaghfir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'i wal amwat. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who repent to him day and night. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who their repentance is accepted. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon us and to guide us and our families and every single human being that walks the earth to guide us onto Sirat al Mustaqim according to the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to make us of from the people of Firdaus al-A'la and to make us from the people who Jahannam becomes haram for them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon us. Wa nusalli ala al-Habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kumu li salatikum yirhamni wa yirhamukum Allah.